Welcome back to another session of the Flatsum e-commerce WordPress theme tutorial. Today, I'm gonna help you change a boring menu like this into an extraordinary menu like this. Now, you'll be surprised how easy it is after you learn the little tricks here. And this is one of those titles that, oh, that one little trick that I don't want you to know about. This really is kind of it. And you're going to come out looking and getting a really great menu, kind of like this. Nice mouse overs, titles, an image over here. Some really great stuff that just looks super amazing. So let's get straight to it. Before we start, there are a few things you need to know. The first thing is, yes, it is going to require a little bit of extra work from you, especially on the graphic side in order to make it look as good. The reason is, what this image here is, it really is an image. So in order to add an image into the menu, you are going to have to get an image that fits nicely and has the style, the colors, and the size that you want in order to make it fit proper. And I'll tell you a few little caveats and restrictions on that in a minute, but there's no normal way to get this into the WordPress menu. There's no image option in the menu. So what we're going to do is actually just create another regular old menu item and get the image link in there in a fun little way. The fonts we used, the little mouse overs, and the titles here, I'm gonna show you how to get those too because it is rather easy once you understand how it works. And don't worry, you don't really have to touch much code. You do have to add a few things, but you don't have to alter any code. So you can copy and paste what you see on the screen and you'll have something nearly identical. So let's get started by showing you what this thing really is. And it's gonna be a little bit of a surprise, I'm pretty sure. The shop by menu was made by having three child items and then having items under those children in order to create the columns and then the items inside the columns, except for the image. As I mentioned, the image is actually an image. So you might be thinking, oh, this is a really great button and a cool image and all that stuff. Well, what this photo is actually, it's a photo we've had on a friend's wall. Um, my wife drew these images, so we just took the image and it's a really, really fun photo. And then she took that photograph and then she added this box over here and this button, which looks identical to the buttons on this page. So we created the style and the brand on the page first and only then did we get to create this image to match that style. And if you think I'm joking, if you're thinking that this is some cool little button or some magical trickery in code, it's not. Here it is. This is an, an image, this is the whole darn image. We had to plan this out, but here's the caveat. As you can see, this is a very, very specific size of an image. If we had this to be a wide image, well, what you would see here would be a very wide image. So what we did is we figured out what the column width is here after we added all the text and the, based on the longest item. That sets the column width. And then we made our image to be that same width. Also, before we added the image, so we added all our menu items, saw how tall this whole box is, this white box from where this little border ends here, down all the way to here. We found out what the height is there, and we made that image fit right into that. So if you check out this image, and I mouse over some code, this image is 183 pixels by 352 pixels. But that is very specific to our menu. If you only have one or two items here, this if you add that huge image, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So any image you use here really, really should match the column width if you have columns and really should match the height of the object you have here if that's what you want. When talking about this box just a second ago, I mentioned children and items under that and columns and all those things. So let me show you what I mean by showing you what we did specifically on our corporate store page. And then we're gonna recreate that on the demo. So here we are, this is the actual backend of our live store. 
I know it looks a little bit confusing because we have a lot of options for menus here on the left side, but don't worry about that. I'll get that into that in a bit. And once your store develops, you'll have a whole lot of stuff here too. The interesting part is here on the right side and in the middle. Do you remember that shop buy link the menu? Well, all it is is a regular old link to our shop page and we just called it shop buy. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, the shop page is our WooCommerce landing page. And remember when you were setting up WooCommerce, it created some pages for you. And if you just click shop, it takes you to the signing page, whether it has the categories or your current product listings, which is the default. Well, that's all it is here. Same for us. We just called it shop by because then we decided we're going to classify that by either a collection or a category. Now, if we look down here, a sub item, what I called a child item, is simply a menu that was shifted over. And that's it. If I add a regular old dummy link to the menu, it adds it way down here, right? Now, if I wanted the dummy link to be a child of Y custom, all I have to do is just move it over. Now it is a child of Y custom. But you're thinking, whoa, wait a minute. There seems to be a child of a child. Well, you're correct. You can have that. And that is what creates the columns. We here have something very simple. Since we didn't want collections to be clickable, it's a custom link, just like here's when we created a dummy link. It's a custom link. So let me remove that. And all we did is gave it absolutely no link and we called it collection. That's it. That makes it not clickable. Well, somebody can click on it, but nothing's going to happen. So nothing special so far, right? No weird column stuff, no nothing. And let me show you the category. Nope, no weird code. Also, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. We just call the category. So, so far, basically, there's just the shop by menu, main parent, and then collection and the category children, correct? The third main child is the image column. And I'll get to that in a minute. But the column items come from the children of the main children. So if we go to the main store website, we have weddings, baby and kids, the gentleman under collection, correct? Well, that's all that is here. Weddings, baby and kids, gentlemen, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want this to look nice, I do recommend you have an equal amount of menu items. That makes it look the best, especially if you're going to have multiple columns. So here we just populated with sub sub children to the children to the parent. That's it. Now the interesting part though, the image column, this is where you have to add some interesting things. But at the same time, it's actually not that complicated, but it is a little bit of a workaround. So let's check it out. Now, here's something very important to realize. This column item, the image column, as we called it, because that's all it's called. It's not a special column. It's not one of these items here. No, 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 no. We just called it the image column because the name is never going to be shown. What this is, is a custom link. So that's all this is here. We can add, you know, anything and any title is that, you know, that dummy link that we created. The URL for us is where we want people to go when they click on it. So far, so good, right? Now, here are the two things you need to know to create an image column. The CSS class right here is called image dash column. Now you might be thinking, wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't see this whole CSS class thing. And that's okay. In order to see CSS class and the description, you have to scroll all the way up on the top right, you'll see an option that says screen options. Click on that. And here you'll be able to set what you see or don't see for all of these items here and what you see here. So if you want to see the CSS class over here under show advanced menu properties, click CSS classes, but you'll also need to see the description. So also make sure that description is checked. 
So again, make sure that CSS classes and the description are checked. Now, no need to save. All you have to do is just check them and then click up and you'll be able to see the CSS classes and description. So the CSS class is image dash column and that's it. And your description, that's the URL link to your image. That's it. No special code, just the link directly to your image. That's it. That is how you make a menu like this. You have one child, two child, third child, which has very simply a class of image column. And the description is the link to an image. And that's it. And to get items here, those are just the sub children. That's it. That's how you create a really cool handy dandy menu for fonts, and mouse overs and stuff like that. That's just some very simple settings in the flat sum stuff. You have the fonts that you can change in the flat sum backend colors and lines. That's all you would have to set there. And that's it. So have fun making a great image menu. But remember, you have to create this image yourself. There's no special buttons that you can add. So make sure the image is properly sized for the menu that you have and know where you want it to go to. But you, by the way, you can also have it go nowhere just so it stands there and looks pretty. That's possible too. But I highly recommend if you are going to add an image, make it an actionable image. That's always one of my models on websites is if possible, and especially when we're creating something pretty, make sure that a user can take a very simple action on that item. So create something simple, like click here to learn more, get our newsletter, check out our fall product line, summer line, whatever it may be, put something cool here. Or if you are doing a very small store with just a few categories, you can say categories instead of shop by or shop categories. You can have, for example, your sports collection, and that's a shoes, tennis, or whatever else. Here you could say swimming stuff. Another third column could be, well, let's say cat toys. And the fourth one could be your image that says, hey, here are my specials. So you'd have an image of something special going on, maybe, or an image of a group of your products and say here, you create this in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever image creation program you have. And down here or up here, however you'd want to style this to match your theme and your brand, you'd say something like, hey, shop our specials, shop our deals, 20% off, 10% off, whatever it is, you can put it right there, but it has to be done in an image because you can't put a button and you'll have to make this button yourself. And if you're using the buttons here, that's super simple. It's just a border with white text and that's all that is. If you're using the buttons that have the full uh, full background, kind of like the mouse over here, even simpler. All you have to do is create a box and your text inside that box and plop it on top of your image. It's that simple. So go out, have fun, make a great menu. All right, and I promised to show you how this works and the demo site. So let's dig in. Here's the demo backend. So I'm going to add a simple little menu that goes absolutely nowhere. I think text doesn't matter. I'm just going to call it the image column or even better just to, make, just to really show you that it doesn't matter what the name is. My silly image. Add it. I'm going to add it under here. Now, remember when I said you have to enable the screen options over there? So let's enable the CSS class and the description. CSS class and the description. Here we go. I'm going to use the same image from the store. So my CSS class was image column. Save. And let's check it out. All right. Now this is pretty darn cool, isn't it? I of course have absolutely nothing in the menu under here, but I have an image in the menu, don't I now? Now that is pretty darn cool. Now to add other columns, 
let's add a few more dummy links to show you how that works. I'm going to add a link, another dummy link. My fun dummy. All right, and I'm going to make my fun dummy a child as well. And another one. Let's call it middle one. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Now let's get some childs. Children two. And let's make those sub menu items, shall we? Now let's click save. Refresh. Now, isn't this pretty darn cool? And if we wanted italics there, that's just some settings in the flatsome backend. So that is really just how you add super simple images. And if I wanted the menu to be this short, I could just cut off the image right about here. And then this whole block would be about yay high.